Hello and thank you so much for joining us on ZBC TV. You are watching The Total View. My name is Yvonne Mukondani. Now on the program today, we are joined by Her Excellency, the Secretary General of Comesa, Ms. Chileshe Mpundu Kapwepe. Your Excellency, welcome. How has been your stay so far? Thank you, Yvonne. My stay has been very well. Warm welcome and I'm really happy to be here. You're happy to be here. Have you enjoyed any of our delicacies? Yes, we had dinner last night and mm -hmm. I discovered your rice and groundnuts, which I've never had before. Your Excellency, what brings you to Zimbabwe as Commissar Secretary General? Yeah, first of all, this is my maiden visit uh, as after my appointment as, um, as a Secretary General of Commissar to Zimbabwe. So I've come to that uh, we can engage and uh, update um, on, on the new developments that are, are currently uh, taking place in this uh, uh, regional and uh, uh, continental trade um, mm -hmm. developments that have taken place and it was important to engage and, and appraise the member states on what is going on and what, how we can support the, the process. How would you describe um, Zimbabwe's effort into the integration of COMESA? One of the focus for us is uh, to try and increase intra-COMESA trade. Um, we as, as member states uh, are in a position to, to offer each other different goods and, and, and trade amongst ourselves before we even go to outside uh, the block and outside the continent itself. Mm -hmm. So we've been looking at issues of trade facilitation, how do we harmonize regulations around uh, trade and so that movement of goods is, is, is eased and, and, and facilitated. Uh, we look at um, development of border infrastructure, so we have one stop border points, for example, for Zimbabwe and Zambia, Chirundu, so that we have a more efficient movement at border points, which is an additional cost for people who are trading if we have congestion and hold up at mm -hmm. the border. So normalize those. Uh, look at uh, using uh, technology to, again, enhance trade, uh, such as e-commerce. We're looking at uh, the digital tra free trade area, so we want to look at how we can support e-commerce so we can have market uh, um, uh, trade on online, on a digital form, so that you don't have to be sitting in next to each other to trade, you can actually trade uh, online. And we also, with that, we'll also support uh, the e-logistics, e which is having documentation which can be submitted in, in soft copy. Uh, in, uh, rules of origin or certificate of origin it can be submitted in, in, in electronic form, contracts can be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, signatures can be accepted and so on. Um, so those are the, some of the developments we're trying to assist from a regi regional perspective so that there's harmonization and when there's harmonization then it means the ease of movement of goods and people is facilitated. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned that the issue of um, advancement in as far as technology is concerned, e-commerce, so that we trade mm -hmm. as a region using technological apps and technological gadgets. In your view, how has this been received by us as advocates, by the block in general? Yes, we're very much at the, I would say, really initial stages. But what is important is, if we're going to trade, we need a common platform, for example. And that's where Comesa is in the position of, of convening the countries together and so that we have agreement on developing common platforms we can speak to each other. Otherwise, if we have fragmented developments, uh, although they might be uh, supported at a national level, it becomes then difficult to integrate. And trade is about trading with others. So it's important that we have a common platform, that we have a common agenda, and that I think that's where the role of Comesa becomes important. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, what can we say have been your challenges in as far as executing your mandate as a regional bloc? One of our major challenges is the domestication of the decisions that we make. Because obviously, we can make the decisions and agree, mm -hmm. but if they're not implemented at the national level, then we don't gain much traction in, in, in our agenda to, to have harmonization and to have common platforms and, and common regulations. So one of the challenges we face really is the slow domestication of, of our, our, our interventions, our programs, our instruments. Um, we have had great success in other areas, for example, the Comesa Yellow Card, which is an insurance tool, uh, which um, you can insure your, your, your vehicle, your truck in, in, in Zimbabwe, and it can move all the way in the Comesa countries without having to rearrange for different insurance in each country. So that's a seamless way to, to move your goods, and that has worked very well. But then we've had other challenges where um, the instruments maybe have not been 
domesticated by our countries. Mm -hmm. And still talking about trade, the issue of um, open borders has been on the cards, it has been part of the conversation for a long time and it has been cited as one of the things that will enable us to trade freely as a region. What's your take on that? Yes, of course, if we're going to talk about integration, then we have to fully integrate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the other economic blocks, for example, the EU, you go in with one visa, one common visa, and you can move around within the, the EU without having to get a different visa for a different country. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the areas which where we're still having, um, I think, slow progress. But uh, we have tried to, to uh, counter that by um, setting up a, what we're calling a, a business visa, so a visa for business persons. Mm -hmm. So that should be easier to get and easier for business person to move around and trade within Comesa. But ultimately, we want to have a much more uh, for, a focus on people being able to move from one country to the other. To the other. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's look at the issue of funding and political will, which is one of the major challenges not only to Comesa but other regional blocs. It seems to be a hindrance in the prospects of, of Africa and as far as the development agenda is concerned. What's your take on that? Yes, I think that's a very important um, aspect because I think uh, most of our regional blocs have, to a large extent, still continue to um, depend on support from our cooperating partners to fund particular projects, but of course they will come in with their own focus. Uh, what is needed is for us to be able to raise our own funds and then, then clearly uh, define our own narrative of what aspect we want to develop first and how we sequence that. Um, one of the uh, issues that has been taken up, for example, at the Africa AU uh, continental level is that there is a levy uh, which is uh, being collected by the AU of a very small percentage, 0.02% on imposts that come into 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 Africa by countries, so that levy um, is, is a way for the countries to collect um, some revenue, which which then can give to to the African Union to to, to help implement these programs. Uh, that can also be done at at, at a regional economic uh, level. For example, ECOWAS does have a levy in place, and that helps them to to generate a sustainable way of funding their economic region, uh, regional. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. We take a short break. We will be back just now. Please to stay with us. You are watching the Total View. My name is Yvonne Mukondani. Now on the program today, we are joined by Her Excellency, the Secretary General of Comesa, Ms. Chileshe Mpundu Kapwepe. Your Excellency, before we went for the break, you mentioned how critical it is for us as a region to integrate wholly. And you mentioned that we cannot talk about one aspect of integration and ignore the other. Now let's look at the Comesa Adjustment Facility. How critical is this? Yes, I think one of the um, issues that was a challenge was when you remove um, tariffs uh, from goods that you are um, exporting or importing, um, it means that that um, revenue for the governments uh, on imports then disappears. So the, the, the facility was to um, address that imbalance or that loss of revenue so that there's an adjustment and there's a support um, to the countries as they lost revenue because they lost the um, revenue from customs and duties that they would have applied on goods which are now become duty free because they are being traded within the region. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so I think that was very important to, to support the transition from removing of tariffs to now having duty free um, uh, imports. Um, so that's, it's, it's, very, it's a very important support mechanism but ultimately I think we need then to develop our own capacity to you know, to increase our productive capacity, to be able to develop products that we can then trade amongst ourselves and, and then raise that revenue, uh, which we still require to run our... Mm -hmm. Now, talking about production, can we say we are doing enough in terms of production? Are we producing enough our, uh, our products of high-end, good quality that we can actually export them to foreign markets? Can we actually stand as a region and say, this is what we are producing with confidence? Yes, I think um, industrialization, is, which is a very important agenda for Zimbabwe, for example, mm -hmm. but for most of our member countries, is also a key uh, development area for, for Comesa, 
in particular agribusiness. So uh, adding value to our agricultural products, for example, one of the uh, projects that we have on hand is to support SMEs in capabilities in, 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 in their production, in, for example, in leather goods, in, in cotton to textiles. So we are supporting countries to um, not only increase their uh, productive capacity, but also uh, address issues of quality, because you're only going to compete if your products are of good quality. So, for example, we're also supporting setting up um, infrastructure around, uh, for example, site-on-site -site sanitary requirements mm -hmm. for especially uh, agri products. So we, we support to, to, to not only train people, but also to have the labs that are set up so that we can test these goods for, for qualities and specific requirements, so that then we increase the capacity of uh, the country, not only to produce goods, but to produce quality goods, which they can export. We are supportive in, um, uh, in making sure that your productive capacity increases. Uh, we, as, as nations, we still remain in the form of exporting raw materials many years later. I think it's time Africa started looking inwards and developing their own products, um, making uh, rules and harmonization of rules so that it's easy for me to, to trade with my neighbor. I don't have to go through so many systems and regulations. And I think that if uh, Zimbabwe uh, addresses all those uh, standardizations and policy issues which, which we are ready and willing to help mm -hmm. uh, to support your very um, well uh, develop strategy as well of what you want to do and how you want to do it and how you want to s sequence all those development issues. We are there to, to, to support you and I think that uh, the, the, the political will is there. How have member sta states been faring in, uh, in all these aspects that we've mentioned because we cannot talk about trading without having mentioned these three aspects. In your view, can you say member states have been effective in as far as this three are concerned? Yes, I think uh, it's very clear for us that uh, without peace and security, you cannot have development and the trade that we're talking about. So one of our mandates as Comesa is, is, a, is an aspect of, of, of governance um, and, and peace and security. And we have uh, worked too with our member states to, for example, um, develop early, early warning, what we're calling early warning systems, which where we think there's potential conflict, then we go in early enough to try and see how that can be resolved. We do have a committee of elders, most of them are retired former heads of state, who can be called upon to, to go in and mediate and, and see people around the table if that is necessary, so that we don't wait until we have an escalated uh, situation before we step in. So we're actively working all the time to make sure that we, we detect any issues and, and we try and move in as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. As a nation, um, as, as I can safely say, as a region, probably, because Zimbabwe and Mozambique recently had the cyclone in Ike and Amunamunich, which hit us, and which indeed hit us pretty bad. And we're talking about issues to do with stability and an environment that is conducive for production as a region. What have you done as a block to try and um, minimize the effects that have been caused by, by the cyclones so that they do not affect productivity? Yes, I think that's a very important um, um, aspect. We, we um, of course, the, the first responders in such situation would be specialized agencies like the Great Cross and so on, just to, to maintain the situation and bring it back to normal. But there's also other effects of such occurrences which will be you know, much further, much long, more long-lasting, and that's where we come in. And I think we do have um, 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 efforts in, in climate change, uh, talking about mitigation and resilience, trying to uh, improve the capacity of countries to, to, to support their resilience efforts, to also um, look at issues like um, smart agriculture, um, making sure that we move towards um, uh, agricultural um, systems which are very much focus on the, the fact that there is climate change, the fact that we could have floods, the fact that we could have droughts, so that we're better prepared for these occurrences. So resilience, mitigation, and um, the smart agriculture. We do have some um, uh, programs in some of the countries already going, and uh, we would extend the force to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you very much for enlightening us on that. Let me take a short break. We will be back just now, please, to stay with us.
On the program today, we are joined by Comesa Secretary General, Her Excellency Chileshi Mpundu Kapwepe. Your Excellency, you welcome back. Thank um, you. Before we went for the break, you were enlightening us on how, as Comesa, it is important for us to have the know-how pertaining to climate change and how we should engage in uh, smart agriculture, especially pertaining to the recent uh, cyclone and die that hit us. As, as a region. Now let's look at the projects that you're currently engaged in as Kamesa. Yes. Uh, yeah, before we move to that, maybe I'll just mention under the, that's, uh, the support that we've given uh, for, for the IDA okay. uh, cyclone impact um, uh, through one of our Kamesa institutions, which is the Trade and Development Bank, which is giving 100,000 uh, US dollars to, to Zimbabwe to help the mitigation effort, especially to do with schools and education that were affected and also the other member countries like Malawi and, 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 and uh, Mozambique, who also given $100,000 each. So that, that's the effort that we've, um, we've done there. Coming back to the projects, uh, yes, uh, we are, with the help of um, the EU support, we, uh, there's been a disbursement of 5.1 million euros uh, between 2010 and 2017 in uh, support of uh, various aspects of um, uh, the programs that one are on ground and also policy formulation. So we've, we've, we've uh, helped uh, Zimbabwe to, to, for example, to develop the national trade policy uh, and other policies which are supporting your industrialization effort. And we've also trained um, you know, clusters of, of, of groupings, especially um, SMEs. We've trained over 100 uh, SMEs in the, in the leather to textiles um, value chain so that we, we build the capacity to produce uh, goods in that sector. And uh, we're actually visiting after this, I'm going to Chitunguza to, to help to see the project on ground um, that has also been supported by us. So training, so increasing the capabilities of, of um, especially SMEs to, to be able to, to, uh, to position themselves, not only to produce better, but also how to access markets and, and trade. So they're not just stopping at production, then what happens after that? Mm -hmm. So supplying that, uh, so supporting them through those linkages as well, so that then it helps develop that particular industry and also develop the capabilities of, of SMEs as they, uh, we all say that SMEs are the engine of growth, but they have to be supported. For them support. to, yes. we, talking about SMEs, in, in, in Zimbabwe you find that this is the sector that employs most of the people and support is one critical um, element that we cannot um, ignore. I know you've mentioned that support is critical, but can we say that there is enough support, there is, can we say there is adequate capacitation to the SMEs? Yes, I think we're, there's a, a, a very uh, strong commitment to do this. For example, even through um, the, the, the Trade Development Bank, which I spoke about just just recently, which I visited here because they have a regional office here. They are also offering products, special products to SMEs um, in terms of seed capital, but also um, supporting them technically as well, so that you, you also um, capacitate them in being able to run a business, manage a business, as opposed to just giving them money and hoping that they're, they're successful. Because some of them are startups, some of them have been there, but they have not moved very much. So we, we want to couple uh, the support with not just financial but also technical and capacity building so that they, they can flourish and, and, and make a positive contribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, with these trainings that we're talking about, many times people have mentioned that, you know what, a lot of people get training pertaining to different things. Mm -hmm. We can actually hold maybe a workshop on communication, which is my field. Mm -hmm. But then after the workshop, after the training, mm -hmm. nothing really comes out of it. Mm -hmm. So can we say, particularly looking at SMEs, these trainings that they are receiving, are they being fruitful, are they being bearing fruit in their area of work? Yes, this is um, why it's important for us to go beyond the training and talk about linkages to markets, so that if we have a, you know, a cluster of, 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 of SMEs um, uh, targeted to produce for a particular market or a particular area, and when we talk about integration, that's the beauty of integration, because they don't only have to produce for the local market, they can be targeted to produce to, for a market in another country. If it's wider and, and bigger than here. So the possibilities are, are, are huge. But you have to start with being able to have the products, produce it in a way that is quality accepted. And also, usually, the demand would be they don't want small amounts. Mm -hmm. So then we have to cluster them so that we can have the benefit of them coming together. And in, in such cases as well, we support them with, for example, if in the leather industry, in some of the projects that we do, uh, we support them to buy. Um, 
their, their material inputs, which is their leather, to, as a cluster, which means they can buy them for cheaper, they, have, you know, they, they, they can negotiate better to get better quality, than the individual little um, SME setups trying to buy on their own. So these are kind of um, cluster uh, efforts and development that we are putting in place to support you know, a more sustainable way to, to support the SMEs than, as you say, just to come in and train them mm -hmm. and go away. Right. Now, looking at the common market for, for Eastern and Southern Africa, I know we're talking much about the productivity of countries, mm -hmm. what we're producing, what we're exchanging you know, amongst ourselves. But when we're looking at this block, is, are these the only things that we exchange among ourselves or we can talk about technical expertise, we can talk about knowledge, we can talk about other facets that build an economy other than productivity? No, it's true. I think one of the recent uh, uh, discussions I had in one of the member states that I visited was actually um, developing expertise in, um, in certification, for example, of goods and standards. Um, so you could have a country that specializes in training its people to, to, to have the best certifiers and then they can export that service and certify goods commercially, uh, commercial certified goods uh, based on very well known standards that can be developed. So it's not always about goods and services, it's also about knowledge and expertise and also knowledge which is supportive of production of goods or supportive of us being able to have goods that are certified and that can be traded. So these are the kind of things that we, we need to start thinking about. And I think we also have a very large youth population, innovation and, 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 and that kind of, we need to create a space for the youth to become innovative and create solutions which are technological ways, which are not necessarily goods, but they could be services that they could come up with. So I think that there is a, a very great potential for us to develop. What extent has Comesa and other regional blocks in Africa been, um, can we say they've been useful in the development agenda in Africa? I think one natural one is of course the tripartite uh, free trade um, agreement, which is, um, it is a Comesa, um, uh, SADC, and East African community. So I think the, the issue of, 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 of coming together is, is very important in the sense that we can then streamline how we want to do our development. For example, in the tripartite uh, arrangement, um, there's agreement that we'll have three main um, development pillars, and we've agreed that um, SADAC will lead on industrialization, uh, ESC will lead on infrastructure development, mm -hmm. and uh, COMESA will lead on market integration, which, which then makes it uh, much more efficient, much more streamlined. We're not duplicating efforts, we know clearly who's leading um, which aspect of the pillar, and therefore I think that collaboration really does support a more uh, focused and efficient way to integrate. We've also collaborated on other areas, and uh, this is one of my favorite ones. It's a project called 50 Million uh, African Women Speak. So it's a platform uh, which is uh, actually a, a and therefore, a joint effort uh, between ECOWAS in, in West Africa, um, EAC, East Africa, and COMESA. And, and we were getting a platform where women can share uh, the entrepreneurial ideas, financial information, all the other challenges that they may face, and share the experiences and knowledge. Um, so that is supported by the African Development Bank, for example. Mm -hmm. But this is one way of using technology, of having um, us work together across the continent and using our blocks to have quicker and faster agreements than individual countries reaching a call from each other. Now, Your Excellency, the 25th of May is beckoning as Africans we celebrate our Africanness, our uniqueness as a people. What is the significance of this day to us as a regional bloc? What does it mean to us? I think it's very significant, especially this year with the new developments that we've seen on, uh, for example, the Africa continental free trade. I think for me this is a real signal by Africans saying we want to trade amongst ourselves, we want to integrate, we want to be a bloc that can then you know, trade with other blocks or with other uh, across the world. But I think our, our oneness as Africa is coming to the fore by this commitment. And it's, it's uh, the signing of this by so many countries so quickly, I think for me, signals a political uh, commitment to really looking at Africa as, again as one. And the Africa we want, a prosperous Africa. And looking at the agenda 2063, how do we all support that as African? And I think it's a focus for, for all of us. Thank you, Your Excellency, for having joined us on the Total View. It was a pleasure having you, and we hope you will come back.
Thank you very much, Yvonne. We will be back. On the program today, we are joined by Her Excellency, the Secretary General of Comesa, Ms. Chilesha Mpundu Kapwepe.